Today, we're doing some more early ADP battles. Myself, Dr. A, and Zach Hanchu joining us uh, on the show today. Let go. Balls deep. Welcome to the Balls Deep Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Fantasy Basketball International. FBIBasketball.com is our website. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at AdamKing91. Uh, This is episode 33. reason I'm saying that is because I was on Noah Rubin's show earlier today and we were talking about the fact that he has done uh, 21 episodes, I think. Um, So good for us new guys who who are starting out to keep a track of how many episodes we've actually done. Uh, as I said, I'm joined by Dr. A and Zach Hanchu today. I will bring them both in. Gentlemen, how are we both? What's up, man? How are you? Uh, I'm well. A um, little more awake than I was um, when we did the show four hours ago um, with Noah. I just rolled out of the shower and, and onto the computer. So it's the middle of my work day now. So I'm a bit more alert. Uh, Steve, what's been going on in the past week? Uh, not a lot. My uh, my son and I went out and played golf on s- Saturday. Actually, I played 36 holes. The Ooh. second 18 I played with him it was 97 degrees when we teed off. And both of us played out of our minds, like the best I've ever played at this golf course <laughs> in 20 years. And then we went out and played earlier today, and neither one of us could hit the golf ball. So... <laughs> It's that's golf, I guess. That is golf. I'm just pulling up what 97 degrees is because for me, that, <laughs> almost a hundred. Yeah, I know. I know it's a lot because I know when I was in. Uh, yes, it's about 36 degrees here. I know when I was in Vegas a few years ago, it was over. It was up near 110 every day we were there, um, and that was very hot. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, nowhere near that hot here at the moment. Um, so we're going to go through some ADP battles. We had Josh Lloyd on last week. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good show, good format. It, it is still a little bit early, obviously. Where Well, it's less than two months now till the start of the season, but draft season probably kicks off in about a month. Uh, I think people start their drafts probably early September, uh, early October, um, even, even late September. So... We're getting closer. Um, this week, we're going to be looking at uh, Yahoo ADPs. So last week, we did; they were sort of based on our uh, FBI ADPs. This week, I thought we'd do Yahoo um, as a bit of a change of pace. Uh, let me bring up the screen. There we are. I have, a Yahoo, draft. I have a Yahoo draft tomorrow with uh, RotoWire, guys. Yeah, yeah, I saw Alex Barutha was recruiting for that one, and it's yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't line up with my time when I'm awake, um, so won't be doing that. But yeah, I've been in a couple, and and Zach, you've been in a few mock drafts as well. Oh yeah, yep, yeah. um, and we've got a we've got an auction draft coming up this weekend uh, as well, which is going to be interesting. Um, all right, so on to the first one. Uh, I didn't – now, I mean, with ADP battles, I don't like to start too high because obviously if I was to say who are you taking at pick eight um, or, or pick ten, it, it doesn't really matter. It's whether you take um, – well, I don't know. Say pick six, who are you taking, Halliburton or Shea? It doesn't matter really. They're, they're as good as each other. Um, doesn't make a difference. It's once you start getting lower and lower in the draft that – uh, you can make a case for one player over another. So I've started at pick 32. Uh, I've tried to keep the positions similar. So because obviously if we were looking at pick 32 and we're looking at a centre and a guard, you go with what you need. If we need a guard, I take a guard. If I need a centre, I take a centre. So I've tried to keep the positions uh, very similar. So we're looking at two players who are who have similar role um, and produce somewhat similar um 
stats on the court. So pick 32, I've gone with Jalen Brunson and DeJounte Murray. Let's start with uh, let's start with Doc because you're in Atlanta. Who would you go with here, Jalen Brunson or DeJounte Murray? These were two of my favorite guards last year coming in. And looking back on what they both did last year, I feel like Brunson really couldn't have played much better than he played. I, I, I feel like he had a great year with the Knicks. He was sort of uh, in charge of the offense. He, he did whatever he wanted. I don't think things can get much better for him in New York. And he, even with that, and DeJounte sharing time with Trey Young and all that, DeJounte was still about a round higher um, overall value at the end of the year. And I f- just feel like uh, DeJounte just has the more f- – fantasy friendly game with the steals and the the percentages just everything he does it's just a little more fantasy friendly than Brunson I'm I'm gonna go with uh DeJounte and Zach uh are you are you on board there or are you more on the Brunson train you know what man I'm kind of pivoting here on the fly because when you sent me over the the guys we were talking I was prepared for Jamal Murray but you know what <laughs> this 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 does not change. This does not change what my thinking is here because Doc, as you said, Brunson played out of his mind last season. He's ascending. Uh, you know, he took over for the Knicks. Dejounte Murray did finish around ahead of him. I mean, that's that's totally true. He does have a very fantasy friendly skill set, uh, but he's not going to get back to that. You know, every other night triple double we saw in San Antonio. He is sharing the court with Trey Young. There are other guys in Atlanta. It's not just his show playing for a terrible Spurs team. Uh, I, I will tend to disagree with you here with Brunson. I do think there's another gear he could take. Uh, and I think we got glimpses of it in the playoffs when he was attempting more threes. Um, you know, that was one of the you know kind of areas that he could approve on, uh, at least from a fantasy perspective in my mind. Uh, only hit two threes per game last season. Um, he was – as you remember, just going bananas in the playoffs with his scoring uh, as he tends to do in the playoffs. So I think if he can, you know, maybe push those threes up a little bit, uh, I think he can score more than 24 a game. I think that's definitely a possibility for him. Uh, You know, even with some of the guys they added uh, to the backcourt, I don't think Dante DiVincenzo or Josh Hart are going to really be threats to steal, you know, points or touches from him too much. Uh, So I think he can take it to the next level. And I'm going to go Brunson here. I think we have not seen his best ball quite yet. Yeah, it's a tough one for me because I think, as you said, Brunson's going to score more. Uh, He He's not really sharing the ball as much. I mean, Julius Randle likes to get his hands on the ball quite a bit as well. But um, it's a a little bit of statistical need here, slightly, just whether you're going more defensive or more offensive uh, numbers. Because as we know, DeJounte is going to get you more steals. Um, But we also know that those low volume stats, and we talked about this on Noah's show, low volume stats like blocks and steals can elevate a player's rank um, quite substantially, quite quickly. Um, but people do tend to chase points early as well. So I think there's a case that both of these guys could be reached for in certain drafts. Um, I tend to go with DeJounte slightly um, just because I think I, I tend to try not and reach for points. Um and I like to get those steals, uh, but I, I think you could make a case either way. But I think I'd slightly lean Dejounte, but it's it's very very slight. Um, not a, not a sort of a yeah. I'm definitely on Dejounte. Um, I went with guards for the next one as well. Um, so based on Yahoo ADP of 41, Darius Garland and uh, De'Aaron Fox. Uh, we'll start with you this time, Zach. A clear preference here for you, or or is this a pretty tight one as well? You got to start including first names here, man. I was prepared for Michael J. Fox. I I, I don't know what I'm supposed to what I'm supposed yeah, to do here. You're going to have to adjust. All right, so so man, I was out on Fox last year. I, I mean, he was always a guy that kind of hovered in that seventy to eighty range, uh, you know, just because of the shooting. Um, 
and the lack of threes. But I mean, this was that was his best season last year. Finished 42nd in per game value. Obviously, balled out completely. Um, it, career best year for him with rebounds, with efficiency, um, and that took him, you know, to get up to that 42nd rank. Garland, on the other hand, adjusting in a new year, playing with Donovan Mitchell took a little bit of a step back from that historic season he had two years ago when he broke out and still finished 48th. So the guys are this close in value. Fox had the best season of his career, crazy efficiency, 51.2% from the field. And Garland actually took a little bit of a step back. So I'm going to go with the younger guy in Garland, the guy that, you know, regressed a little bit and still has room for improvement. Uh, and I think has a little bit more upside, uh, you know, just for the price that you're going to pay. And I think that he will end up coming a little bit cheaper uh, than Fox will on draft day to a lot of folks just because of Fox's phenomenal year and Garland's, you know, playing alongside Mitchell, who was, you know, a top 15 guy. Yeah, look, I, I think I, I agree there. Like for me, if you think back and just think broadly for last season, as you said, Fox was, it was, he was awesome. Um, everything was very positive. He had his best season. People are going to use that and go, okay, look, he's he's good to go. This this is it. He's breaking out. Yep. Uh, Garland, if people look at him, will go, he actually didn't do much last season. I, I probably drafted him in the, I don't know, late second round. He didn't really perform. Donovan Mitchell's there. So I think just based on hype and, and short-term memory, people are going to go Fox over Garland. But a little bit like you, I think I prefer Garland. Garland, I think there's more room for him to grow um, alongside Donovan Mitchell. Has Fox peaked? I don't think so, but I, I just think that Garland is a long way off what he can be as an NBA player. Uh, Steve, what are your thoughts? You know, it's tough. Fox Fox may have peaked last year. I mean, he, I don't know how much better he can play, sort of mm. like we were talking about Jalen Brunson or I was talking about Jalen Brunson. I don't know that Fox can play much better, but then again, the Kings had such an incredible season and all the hype and all the love that De'Aaron Fox was getting last year. Like he sort of came out of nowhere and, and resurrected uh, our belief in him as a fantasy guy. He gained a lot of confidence last year and Sacramento got a taste of winning and they want to go back there again. They want to, they want to have the, same type of season this year they had last year. Meanwhile, Garland is playing alongside Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell's going to make it hard for Garland, in my opinion, to do what what needs to happen for Garland to take it to the next level. I, I think it's going to be very hard for for Darius to do that, uh, playing alongside Mitchell. Just sort of like uh, Trey Young is going to have a tough time being Trey Young with Dejounte Murray next to him. So. I'm going to just stay with the hype train. I'm going to stay with the hot name. I, I, I think De'Aaron Fox uh, is going to have another really good season and could even could even step things up a little bit uh, this year just based on the confidence that the entire Kings organization has right now. And, they, and they've given the keys to Fox. You know, They got rid of, of Halliburton, and it, it's his team. He's the alpha right now, and I, I just think he's got a really good year. Yeah, look, it, it is true that the Kings are fully invested in him get, getting rid of someone like Halliburton, and we've seen, and Zach is all too familiar with Halliburton. Um, we we know that he's blown up. He's become this franchise player himself. Um, the Kings obviously viewed Fox higher than him, um, so he's going to be given every opportunity. And he's not that old, is he, Fox? Is he like 25, 26? Am I way off there? Someone can look it up. Sounds about right. I would say, yeah, he's 25. He'll be 26 at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. So he, so he's still young and, and theoretically not hasn't hit his prime uh, yet, but but I feel like Garland's a couple of years younger than that. So, um, yeah, look, I, I don't think the, the free throws for me are a, maybe a swing category. I think Fox is probably, what, 78, Garland's 88, something like that from the free throw line. So... There's a bit of a difference there. Um, yeah, anyway, another fun pair of guards. And speaking of fun, uh, two very young players, um, K 
coming off strong seasons last year, uh, rookie seasons. Uh, pick 60, ADP uh, of 60, yeah. Paolo Banquero, Jalen Williams. And I did put Jalen Williams in the uh, message, Zach, so you, <laughs> you hopefully I spelt it right and you didn't think it was the other Jalen Williams. Um, Doc, thoughts here. Are, are these, I mean, is pick 60 around where you think these, this is where these guys are going to be going, and, and would you have a preference? Yeah, I think pick 60 sounds about right. Um, I think my my head and the numbers and the equations all tell me that Ben Caro's the guy, but I think that Jalen Williams is sort of one of those my guy guys, and I, I have a feeling I'm going to be drafting Jalen Williams a lot. So I'm going to go with Jalen Williams. I wish Ben Caro block shots. Um, he does know, in the in the World Cup. <laughs> and I know, I know, uh, you know, Jalen's not a big shot blocker either, and he he doesn't need to be. Uh, I just wish Ben Caro being a power forward, being a guy at six ten, you know, point five blocks last year. That doesn't really get me too excited, along with the. 6.9 rebounds, but then again, he was a rookie. Uh, he could easily take a huge step forward this season. Um, meanwhile, Jalen is going to have a full cast of characters alongside him in OKC. Some of them weren't there last year, like Chet Holmgren. Um, but I, I still just love Jalen's game so much, it's going to be hard for me to pass on him. And Zach, what about you? Yeah, everybody loves J Dub. I mean, there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with him. He he did ball out last season, as you mentioned. Um, but yeah, Chet Holmgren is there. We don't know how that's going to impact uh, what he's doing. Your man Poku has supposedly been, uh, you know, hitting the weight bench and getting back in shape. I'm going with Paolo Bancaro here, man. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to look at the the rankings and say, oh, my God, he finished outside the top 200. Why would you draft him at pick 60? It's baloney. Throw it out the window. Uh, we're taking into account way too much the field goal percentage. It was terrible last season, 42.7%, 16 shots. It wasn't great, right? But, again, he's a rookie. Scored 20 points per game, 6.9 rebounds, 3.7 assists. Like, these are not nothing numbers. These are big-time numbers from a teenager. And he came into the league and was doing this from the jump. Uh, 0.8 steals, 0.5 blocks. We're going to see the field goal percentage tick up. We're going to see the free throw percentage tick up, which was also terrible. Uh, he's already shown that he can score, he can facilitate, he can rebound. Uh, his stat set to me right now reminds me of Kyle Kuzma and Kyle Kuzma. We're lauding for having some of the best performances of his career. And he's doing this in what year six or seven. And Bancaro came in and did this in year one. And this is his absolute minimum floor. He's got a long, long way to grow. Uh, and I think, you know, that confidence from the world cup, you know, doc touched on it. Confidence can do a lot for a guy's play. Uh, I think that World Cup where he's really shown out, uh, you know, alongside Anthony Edwards and these boys as they've just been thumping other teams. Uh, I think that's going to do a lot for him. Uh, I think he can really excel this season, and I'm targeting the guy with with the higher upside. Uh, I love Jalen Williams, but, you know, the counting stats are not huge. Uh, he, he His ranking was, to me, inflated because of the steals um, and just the uh, – the kind of John Collins effect, the, hey, I don't I don't negatively impact you in too many categories, so I'm ranked higher than what I should be. Yeah, look, I think for me it, it comes down to efficiency. Uh, as you touched on there, Bancaro's percentages last season were pretty ordinary. And given he's a high-volume scorer, he's their number one option, someone with poor efficiency is going to drag down your overall value. So it, it will depend a little bit on who you've drafted prior to what what are we in here round five so your first four picks if you can absorb that hit uh in efficiency then i think bankero would be my choice um and, and yeah jalen williams he the, those steals did elevate his rank but i i still think he's gonna feature pretty heavily for the thunder i think they view him as a, a centerpiece along with shea and and uh josh giddy and chet um 
So I, I think there, there is certainly a case for both of them here. And it, for me, it would come down to that efficiency and whether I can absorb uh, some poor shooting uh, or whether I'm just going for the slightly safer um, Jalen Williams. Uh, I like the Thunder. So, th- I mean, there's a chance. I think I've drafted Jalen Williams, Chet Holmgren and Josh Giddy in, in a couple of leagues this season. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to turn out, but... Uh, I, I do have a soft spot for the Thunder, um, and it is. I mean, part of fantasy is to get your guys on your team, so maybe, I, maybe I would take Jalen Williams, but I do think Bankero has the higher upside um, of the two. I think you're both crazy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we can be crazy. We can be crazy. <laughs> sure. This one's a little bit different. Two players at, at the op- sort of opposite ends of their career. Um, trajectories probably going in different directions. Uh, at pick 62, I've gone Rudy Gobert and Alperen Sengun. Um, I, I, I picked, <laughs> I like that Gobert picture. I, I feel like that sort of summed up his season last season. Like, what the hell? <clears throat> um, so, uh, Steve, a now, preference Adam, you, here? In the list that you sent us, it was Bancaro versus Gobert. And I was thought it? it was interesting that we were doing Bancaro twice back to back. Oh, I did. I so thought that. Oh, well, I go. should have asked you about that, but I did not. So, like Zach, uh, I will be going on the fly here while he scrambles to look up Alperin Shingun <laughs> numbers. Um, uh, it it mm. changes things because I was all prepared. Like Adam, you and I have talked about how I think we kind of feel like. Rudy Gobert is going to make a little bit of a comeback this season, right? Like the yeah. numbers were down, the, the rebounds were well down, the scoring was down slightly, the the blocks were down, everything was down, but it was still 13, 11 and a half, and one and a half basically uh, in those categories. And that's still um, pretty strong fantasy numbers regardless. Uh, the field goal percentage, 66, that's huge. Uh, he's a terrible free throw shooter, but he's low volume, and it's not horrific free throw shooting, so he's not going to kill you there. Meanwhile, Shagoon, who I l- have loved for the last three years, and every every year he just sort of lets me down and, and things don't go as well as they were supposed to. Uh, I, I'll tell you what, the, things are so weird in Houston with with – the addition of Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks. I can't even really get my head around what the what the goal is there. They're not going to win this year or next year, I don't think. Um, and I, I just don't know what they're trying to do. And I think Dylan Brooks is going to be such a dis- disruptive force uh, in the middle of all that that I don't I can't figure it out. What I do know is Shangun is really. Jock Landale is not going to be a threat to Shingu. Uh no. Jabari Smith plays a different position. I mean, this is Shingun's show, and he's also, what, entering his fourth year? It, it's breakout time for Shingun. So this is a tough one. I'm, uh, I think I just talked myself out of Gobert and into Shingun, but I'm not sure. I, yeah, I'm taking Shingun. I don't, I don't need Rudy Gobert on my team. Uh, Zach, you you agree there, or are you disagreeing? I do, man. This is me and Doc were were kind of going back and forth there for a while, but now we're going to have to align here on Shangun. Um, yeah, forget the goober, man. Like I think that's great value. You know, getting him at pick sixty because thirteen, eleven, you know, one and a half to two blocks. That's fine. I. I don't necessarily know that he does have a, a comeback per se. I mean, you know, what's there to tell us that he's going to, he's another year older, you know, he might not be a good fit in this, you know, with the Timberwolves or he might just not be racking up the numbers like he did with Utah, uh, with Minnesota. I'm not sure what changes from year one to year two, uh, you know, Carl Anthony Towns missed so much of the season and Gobert still was, pretty garbage compared to where we drafted him and what he's done in years past. So give me Shangun, uh, the guy that's been getting hyped over the summer, uh, the youngest player in NBA history to record a triple double. 
uh, and from the center position, a guy that averaged four assists per game last year as a 21 year old, couldn't go to drinking bars in the United States, but was, you know, dishing out 10 dimes to terrible rocket teammates last year in horrible games that they were getting blown out in. Give me that guy. Give me the Turkish delight, man, all day. Yeah, and I, I said he was entering year four. He's only entering year three. And the leap he took from the rookie year to last year was pretty, pretty fun. Uh, yep. Still not mind blowing, but but pretty 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 fun. He should be over a block and a steal this year too. So, uh, yeah, I'm going Schengen. Adam. Yeah, I, I, I'll go. I'll be the third wheel here and and, and go with Schengen as well. Just just purely for the upside. Um, my concern is how they use him. Um, given they were chasing Brook Lopez, that concerns me a little bit. Um, if Imi Adoka wants to try and get Tari Eason onto the floor a bit more, they're probably going to have to play Jabari Smith at centre a little bit. So, um, yeah, a little bit about a little bit comes down to his role. So, is he a twenty-eight minute a night player or is he a thirty-three minute a night player? Because that makes a difference. Um, either way, though, I think he he provides more across the board than Gobert. Uh, Gobert is blocks, rebounds, uh, field goal percentage. Yes, field goal percentage is elite, but he's quite a low-volume scorer as well. And with Towns there, well, hopefully there this season, fully healthy. Gobert might be high, like um, high efficiency, but if he's only taking seven shots a game, it doesn't. It's not a huge impact. So, uh, so no, it's it's Shingun for me. I like the upside <clears throat> um, of him. Um, before we move to the next. Uh, next battle. I did tweet something out yesterday about the FBI Locked On Fantasy Basketball World Cup. Um, we are starting to give away entries into the World Cup. Um, it is by entry only, $20 um, if you are invited. $20 entry, I think it's eleven, eleven and a half thousand dollars in prizes. Um, there's multiple drafts throughout the season. It, it's going to be a fun tournament. Uh, I have been allocated 10 entries to give away on today's show. So all we need people to do when you're listening to this, probably over the next 24 to 48 hours, uh, is uh, like this episode, subscribe to our YouTube channel and write something in the comments. I need to come up with a keyword. It was going to be Fantasy Basketball World Cup. You guys got any cool suggestions for a keyword that we could use? Uh, who was Zach? researching before uh michael j fox michael j fox (laughs) okay well today's keyword is michael j fox so uh it's not going to be somewhat something that people will guess without actually listening to this 15 second snippet of the show uh so like the episode subscribe to our youtube channel and write um, or comment Michael J. Fox and uh, and we will put you in the draw and then we will probably do the draw, as I said, in the next 24, 48 hours um, after this show is released, which should be, what are we, Wednesday? Should be out early Wednesday morning US time. Um, what if what Adam, What if somebody writes like Team Wolf or Marty McFly? Are you going to roll with that? Uh, you could you could pop that in brackets so you could put you could put that after Michael J Fox and maybe mm-hmm. you, maybe you get two entries for for okay. a reference All to right. a Michael J Fox movie I don't know um, we'll see we we need to get creative with these entries uh, final one at pick ninety four another pair of guards one that I'm particularly <clears throat> high on this season Markel Fultz and Scoot Henderson and I'm just making sure that that's what I put in the message. <laughs> Mine says, mine says Florence Henderson. Florence <laughs> Henderson. <laughs> you can talk about Florence Henderson. That's fine. Uh, it's faults for me. I'm going to get that out of the way. Um, anyone that listens to me knows I'm pretty high on faults this season. Um, Zach, faults or Florence Henderson? Oh, man, I was going to go with Gerald Bobcat Legend Henderson. But <laughs> I, I, right now I'm going to go with Scoot, man. Um, Fultz is, I mean, look, we all know what Fultz can do if he's given a full healthy season, right? 
he can be a triple double. He can rack up a ton of steals. Uh, he can get you those glorious counting stats. He's an efficient guy. We love him, but there's always been that if he can be healthy for an entire season, if the backcourt is his for an entire season. Mm-hmm. Is it happening this year? He looks <laughs> healthy, but what do you know? The Magic took Anthony Black in the top ten this year, and Anthony Black is not going to sit idly by on the bench this year. So I'm going with Scoot Henderson, the guy that is that looks like a grown man uh, amongst boys in this draft class. Uh, that would have been the number one draft pick in any other draft uh, that Wemby was not uh, in this draft class. And, you know, Charlotte was not foolish enough to take Brandon Miller, which was the stupidest draft pick I've ever seen. Um, I digress, though. Scoot Henderson is poised to take over this, uh, you know, this Trailblazers team that could be the worst in basketball this season. Uh, His skill set from what we saw, uh, you know, before he came into the NBA – he can be a guy that scores, that facilitates, that rebounds, that racks up defensive stats. Uh, so I really like that upside a lot more for him, uh, and I, I think the opportunity is not even close. Uh, Orlando is crowded, crowded in that backcourt. Uh, Portland, it's wide open for the taking. Yeah, uh, I think if I wasn't doing podcasts with Adam for the last month or two, <laughs> I would have said Scoot Henderson also, but he's sort of he sort of got me fired up about Markel Fultz. Now, do I get fired up when I see that he played eight games two years ago and 18 games the year before that? Uh, no, but he played 60. Well, 60. He played 60 last year. Uh, did Ronald Acuna Jr. just do it? Oh, warning track. He's trying to become the first guy to go 60-30. 60 stolen bases and 30 home runs in a season. He just flew out to the uh, to the deep, deepest part of the park. So I'm sorry. Uh, let me get back to where we were. Uh, but anyway, he played 60 games last year, 14 points, four rebounds, almost six assists, steal and a half, um, low turnovers for a point guard. So you got like that about Fultz. He's not a, not a three point guy. So if you are looking for three pointers out of your point guards. He's probably not the guy for you. The only problem I have with with going with Scoot is I agree with Zach. He looks like a grown man. Uh, he would have been number one in the draft without Wemby. I've only really sat and watched him in those games uh, that were on ESPN against Wemby. So I ha- I didn't watch a lot of summer league. I think I-, I really wish I would have watched Brandon Miller in summer league because it sounds like he was absolutely atrocious and horrendous <laughs> um but i i just i'm more comfortable with fultz just because i know he's really worked and come a long way to improve his shooting and he's really worked for a long time to to get to where he is and i don't think he wants to let that go but like like you said zach it is crowded in orlando we are talking about a relatively late draft pick here so there's not a ton um ton of risk and reward stuff going on if you're getting somebody near pick 100. Uh, I'm leaning Fultz. Yeah, look, I, I agree that that Henderson certainly has the higher upside here. Like, he, he's he's untapped, basically. If you if you didn't see much of Summer League and, and didn't watch a lot of Scoot um, last season or anything like that, the documentary on Amazon is worth checking out the G League I think it's called Destination NBA or something it's a G League documentary and there's a lot of Scoot Henderson in that um and I and I, that because for me like obviously we hear oh he's this grown man he's he's ready he's NBA ready his body is good to go when you watch him in the G League ignite you can see why people are saying that because he is huge um so certainly ready to go but yeah look I I, I just like Fultz I, I and this is probably a little bit of just the feel-good aspect of his story and how bad his career was to start, all of the shooting stuff, the shoulder stuff, um, and how he's turned things around. And, and last season he did play, what did you say, Doc, 60 games or something? 60, um, yeah. But he missed the first six weeks of the season from memory, first five or six weeks um, coming off an injury. So I think once he was back, he pretty much played every game. Um, so... 
based on that, I'm assuming he's fully healthy and, and no injury concerns. Um, Anthony Black does worry me a little bit. Uh, they've got Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Gary Harris. So there is um, there are a lot of options there, but I'm I'm hoping that that they're going to give the keys to Fultz just in terms of him running the team. But I don't know. Time time will tell. If they came out tomorrow and said Damian Lillard was leaving and going to Miami, would would that switch your vote? Uh no. I don't think so. No, I still like Fultz. Um, yeah, like Zach said, I mean, Henderson's upside is far higher than, than Fultz. In in two years, three years, he could be a, a second-round guy. But um, I'm going to cling on to the Fultz train as long as I can. It might only be this season that I can do that. <laughs> Next season, it might be the opposite, but I'm going to go. I will Fultz. say this. If, if – if we have this debate a year from now, I'm almost a hundred percent sure I'm going with Scoot. I'm, I'm gonna let Scoot get a year under his year under his belt, though. Yep, I think that's fair. I think the only way I wouldn't is if Fultz somehow blows up this season and goes for like 19 points, eight assists, 1.7 steals, um, maintains his efficiency on the fringe of an All Star berth. I don't know if that's ever going to happen though. So. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping for, but it's probably wishful thinking. Uh, all right, I will get rid of my pretty pictures there. So, um, look, that was pretty good. We were aiming for about thirty-five to forty minutes. We're at thirty-six. Uh, we're getting better at this, Doc, which is <laughs> nice. Practice makes perfect. Uh, any final thoughts on those? Um, I mean, it is still. A bit of t- there's still a bit of time till the start of the season and a few trades that could happen and we don't know starting lineups yet. But, um, yeah, any thoughts on the players that we did today, even though I sent you the, some of the wrong names? Hmm. I think it's uh, it's interesting. It, it'd be interesting for, for us to go back uh, in October and see <clears throat> when it came down to these two players, which one we picked. Uh, because a lot can happen in two months. A lot can happen in training camp. A lot can happen in the preseason. Uh, you know, we're, we've got a special guest on here next week who could completely brainwash me and sell me on the player I just said I wasn't going to draft. I mean, I, I'm like anybody else. I mean, if you if I sit and listen to somebody say good things about a basketball player for long enough, and I respect that person, then it it's going to seep into what I to my mindset. And I mean, I, people change their minds. So be interesting to see, um, even if we did these, these same comparisons two months from now, if we'd all vote the same way as we did today. Yeah, totally agree. And I, I just want to note from these players here, to me, the two most interesting are Shangoon and Bancaro, because I think the, the range of outcomes for those guys, I think they could be, uh, they could be huge stars this season. Uh, you know, if they take that next step forward, um, they could also greatly disappoint us if Bancaro doesn't improve in the efficiency and if Shangun, you know, doesn't get the run that he deserves in Houston, uh, you know, kind of like what we were lamenting last season. Uh, so I think both of those guys are going to be extremely interesting to follow. Yep. Um, yeah, couldn't agree more. Uh, agree with Doc as well. Like you, the the whole point, well, I don't know if it's the point, but listening to multiple fantasy analysts, you do tend to hitch your wagon to some and, and not others and, and certain opinions. And obviously I attached mine to the Tyrese Halliburton uh, train because, because I've I've spent up to go and watch four games when I'm over there just to see Halliburton play. Um, 12 months ago, I can guarantee I wouldn't have done that. So, uh, so you owe me some money, Zach, for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll pick it up off you when I'm over there. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for jumping on. Um, another fun show. Doc and I will be back next week with a special guest, uh, someone that most of you will know but probably haven't seen for a little while, has been uh, off doing other things. So looking forward to that. Um, remember to uh, like and subscribe drop that keyword into the chat uh, if you'd like an entry to the Fantasy Basketball 
World Cup. Uh, that will do it for today. Um, head over to fbibasketball.com to check out all of our content. I'm pretty sure Matt Lawson's redraft ranks are about to launch um, along with mine that are up there. I'm going to go through and do a bit of a, a run through and some adjustments. Uh, you can follow us uh, as well as YouTube uh, on Spotify, yeah, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. And uh, until next time, catch up. You just listened to another episode from the Fantasy Basketball International Podcast Network. Thanks for joining us. And for more information about joining our community, please check out our website at fbibasketball.com.